Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today, for the Devil Fruit Encyclopedia, it's time for some floaty floaty goodness as we examine the Fua Fua no Mi. The Fua Fua no Mi is a paramecia type fruit that allows its user to levitate themselves as well as non-living objects. It was consumed in the series by a certain golden lion Shiki who is best known as the primary antagonist for the One Piece film Strong World. So a few of you may be asking why I'm covering a non-canon fruit here in the encyclopedia. And well, it's because in case you're not aware, Shiki is well and truly canon, having been a primary focus of chapter zero, as well as having been name dropped multiple times in the series during the run of the actual manga. And as such, the Fua Fua no Mi did not make its first official appearance during an arc as I would usually state, but rather in the aforementioned chapter zero. The fruit takes its name from the Japanese onomatopoeia, Fua Fua, which roughly translates to light or airy, and is often referred to things like clouds or something drifting through the air. As a result, both Viz and Funimation went for the straightforward approach this time around and decided to dub it as the float float fruit. So let's jump into this immediately by discussing the word I used in the introduction, levitation. Now this sort of phenomena can take a wide variety of forms and can be saddled with a ton of unique conditions in other media. But this fruit actually has a deeper scientific explanation according to its user in the series. Essentially, Shiki has explained that what the Fua Fua no Mi allows him to do is to cancel out and generally manipulate the gravity of either himself or an object. However, I should state right now that this is very different from Fujitora's devil fruit, the Zushi Zushi no Mi, which allows him to manipulate a more generalized area of gravity. In contrast, the Fua Fua and Ami allows its user to have more precise control of the gravity surrounding certain objects, which comes with a lot of fantastic advantages as well as some conditions to keep in mind. The first of those conditions being that in order to engage in said manipulation, the user must have touched the object first. So depending on your situation, that's a fairly undesirable condition. However, once it is met, the potential for this fruit is absolutely outrageous, as it would appear that there is no limit to the size or type of object that its user is able to control. So you could do something as simple as levitating a weight, although I guess that would negate the only purpose that weight has and existing, or you could set your sights a little bit bigger and levitate an entire marine battleship. And you know what? Why stop at one battleship? Why not levitate the entire fleet? Because that is entirely possible due to the fact that once an object has been touched, the user appears to have permanent control over it. Now it is unknown if there is a limit to how many objects can be levitated at any given time, but if there is, it is a very high number as demonstrated by Shiki. Furthermore, objects don't necessarily need to be all that tangible to qualify either, as the user can levitate vast amounts of water, snow, and assumedly other similar substances. But I guess my question from here would be, say, how much water the user could gain control of at any given point. Like I imagine you wouldn't just be able to stick your hand in at some random spot in East Blue and then levitate the entire sea. So there must be a limit in terms of either quantity or radius in relation to the user. But one of the main benefits of this fruit, which would allow easy access to touching essentially whatever you want, is the fact that the user can levitate themselves as well, basically giving them access to a form of flight, which is a very desirable and rare characteristic within the One Piece world. And in terms of basic weaknesses, other than your standard Devil Fruit stuff, there are only two things I'd like to note. One of which is emphasizing that the user cannot control living things other than themselves. Although where this line gets drawn is once again a bit tricky when you think about things like, well, could the user levitate a tree then? Because it is technically a living thing. And the same goes for grass and general flora. So the fruit may not necessarily be as great as it sounds. Although even if that condition were to be true, it's still pretty amazing. And the other thing I'd like to note is that this is another one of those cases where should the user forcibly lose consciousness, then the effects of the fruit will cease, causing natural gravity to return to whatever objects are floating, which can be uh, very dangerous under certain circumstances. And to discuss that, let's begin examining Shiki's use of the fruit because one of his major projects with the Fua Fua no Mi was the creation of his floating island stronghold named Mervale. Now this incredible feat consists of a collective of extremely large masses of land and water floating comfortably out of sight of enemies. And this usage goes to show the extremes of the Fua Fua no Mi as they have been presented to us because not only was Shiki capable of making this happen, but he can also leave the islands and go elsewhere in the world whilst they retain their floaty glory. Now once again, whether or not Shiki needs to remain within a certain radius of his objects is unknown, but even if such a thing does exist, the radius is so apparently large that it becomes fairly inconsequential for most uses of the fruit. However, Shiki's more famed use of the Fua Fua no Mi has to do with how he invoked its powers to be the very first escapee of the underwater prison in Pearl Down. Essentially, Shiki cut off his legs to escape his restraints. However, due to the fact that he could more or less fly, they were not required for any form of transport. And so as far as we're aware, he just casually floated his way out of the most secure prison this world has ever seen. And of course, Shiki also wields the fruit quite well in combat, using flight as an advantage to gain a ton of extra maneuverability and whatever objects are around him as weapons to fight against his foe. As for an awakening, it's another odd paramecia here because it kind of already does what awakened paramecias are supposed to do, which is control their environment. Awakening this fruit may involve simple ideas of being able to make things float without the condition of touching them, or that the user could now gain access to levitating living things, which would make the Fua Fua no Mi pretty berserk in terms of power and versatility. But at the same time, I don't think that the answer would be that simple. 
Some other miscellaneous things to consider when becoming a floating human. The Fuafuanami is also quite useful for those who have a mind for detail, and its powers can be used to not only levitate, but manipulate gravity to the point where it reshapes the environment. So in the hands of a world-class architect or sculptor, this fruit could be pretty productive to say the least. Interestingly enough, the Fuafuanami may actually be the natural counter to the fruit I referred to earlier in the video, being Fujitora Zushi Zushi no Mi. This is because while the latter fruit would in theory be able to manipulate the area around the Fuafuanami user, the fact is that the gravity of the user and their associated objects are entirely within their own control. In fact, given that Shiki described the fruit as being able to cancel out gravity, it's very possible that the Zushi Zushi no Mi would be completely ineffective. In summation, this fruit is pretty damn fantastic, which is the same thing I'll say about almost any devil fruit that allows its user to fly. That alone makes it a rare and valuable find, but the fact that you can also control gravity so precisely around seemingly anything you see fit holds worlds and worlds of potential, and it is a fantastic convenience for day-to-day -day life. Not only could you just fly anywhere, but you would never have to worry about transporting objects ever again. Definitely a top-tier paramecia for its versatility alone, and I cannot recommend it enough. And with that, we are going to commit the Fuafu and Ami to the Delfruit Encyclopedia. Next time, we're going to be tackling another very unique Paramecia as we delve into the hormone controlling fun of the Horu Horu no Mi. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenanigans takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Fua Fua no Mi. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time. Question, how are you doing today? Well, you know, probably about the same as usual. I mean, I did some writing, a bit of recording, even some editing, so I feel quite productive actually. How about you? Which anime slash One Piece YouTubers do you watch? To be honest, I don't really watch any of them unless there's a huge call for me to check out a video by a particular creator, which I have to say almost never happens. And my reasoning for that is it kind of defeats the purpose of this channel. I mean, I started doing this because there wasn't any One Piece content out there that I wanted to watch, so I just thought I'd make my own. And these days, given the ridiculous amount of hours I spend on One Piece and other anime related videos, when I do get some free time, I usually watch something completely unrelated to this sector of the internet. Why do I exist? Hmm. Well, I'm pretty sure that you exist to hit that like button and subscribe to this channel as well as the New World Review. And that goes for the rest of you as well. Make sure to always like and always subscribe. To me, that is. Do as you please with everyone else.